All right, so this next chapter is all about radicals. So we're going to start um, 7.1 and 7.2, um, which is on nth roots and rational exponents. So we're going to start by talking about nth roots. Um, now, usually when we talk about roots, we're talking about a square root, um, which we write like this. So didn't mean to put a 2 there. But this is the square root. We'll call that the square root of a. Um, something else we've seen, we've seen cube roots look like that. So um, in general, so this is sort of the general thing here. We call it the nth root, where n is a number. Um, so this is the nth root of a, where n is the index, and a is called the radicand. So that's the thing that's underneath the radical. So for a square root, the index, so n, is 2. I guess we can say n equals 2. Um, now for a square root, it's just understood that the index is 2. You don't need to write a 2 here. We never do. So when you see a radical with no number in there, that means it's square root. Um, if you Everything else is going to have a number. So for this, the index is 3. That's a cube root, and it goes on and on as you go up. Um, so that's just vocab. So next thing, you can rewrite all roots as um, exponents. So a square root, it has an index of 2. So that's going to be um, x to the 1 half power. Um, the cube root has an index of 3. That's going to become x to the 1 third power. Um, the fourth root is going to become x to the 1 fourth power. And the fifth root is x to the 1 fifth power, and so on. So the nth root of x is equal to x to the 1 over n. Um, so if you don't believe me, let's actually check on a calculator. So we'll bring up, uh, let's bring up desmos.com, uh, scientific, right here. Um, so we know that 5 squared is 25, right? So let's check that 5 to the 1 half power is the same thing. So on this calculator, you press this button right here for any exponent that's not 2. This one right here is just for an exponent of 2. And we do to the 1 half power. That is not what I meant. I am so sorry. I meant 25 to the 1 half power. So 25 to the 1 half power. There we go. All right. We are in business. So 25 to the 1 half power is 5. And we know that the square root of 25 is also 5. So that works. Um, so just as an example, the square root of 25 is 5. And 25 to the 1 half power is also 5. They're the same thing. Uh, all right. Moving on. All right, rational exponents. So when I say the word rational, um, this word right here means fraction. So exponents that are fractions, they follow this pattern below. So if your radical is being raised to a power, so this is the nth root of a, and it's being raised to the m power. So um, we write that as a to the m over n. So the root is always in the bottom. So just like over here, um, in all of these, the root was in the denominator of the fraction. Uh, it's the same deal here. The root is always in the denominator, and the power is going to be in the numerator. Um, so again, the number on top is the exponent, and the number on bottom is the root. So you can think about it like, um, this might help you, it might not. But if you're talking about the ground, let's pretend this is the ground, and here's a flower. Flowers have roots, right? So that's a beautiful flower. So all the roots are down here. The roots are in the bottom. The flower is on top. That's the flower power. So the power is on top. The roots are on the bottom. Isn't that exciting? So flower power on top. Roots are below the ground and they're on bottom. So maybe that'll help you, maybe not. But the power goes on top, the root goes on the bottom. 
Um, and then if it's negative, that just flips it over to the bottom, just like before negative exponents bring it to the bottom, turns into a positive. Um, okay, moving on. So evaluate the following expression. So we're going to rewrite these as a radical because um, they're easier to solve by hand that way. So 9 to the 3 halves power. So my power is on top. My root is on the bottom, so it's the square root, because we have a 2 in the bottom. Square root of 9 to the third power. Um, all right, so the square root of 9, we know that that's 3. So this is 3 to the third power, which is 27. Uh, because 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. So um, that's it for that one. So for letter B, first we have a negative exponent, so I want to move that to the bottom because I don't like that. So we have 32 to the positive 2 fifths in the denominator now. So we have 1 over. So again, my root is in the bottom, so it's the fifth root of 32. And all of this is squared. So the fifth root of 32. Um, so I know what that is. If you don't, you can check on a calculator um, using the root button. So on this calculator, the root button's right here. You do the fifth root of 32, and that's 2. So the fifth root of 32 is 2. So we have 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 over 4. All right, moving right along. So again, on your calculator, um, if you have a TI-84 or a scientific calculator, the exponent key usually looks like a carrot, so a little up arrow like that. So see if you can find that. Um, and when you use your calculator to approximate one of these, you first need to rewrite this. So this is the fourth root of five to the third power. So we need to rewrite this so it has a fraction exponent. So um, the root is in the bottom, so the root is 4. Power is in the top, so 5 to the 3 fourths. So you type in 5 and then the exponent button, and then 3 divided by 4 um, for the fraction, and then you hit enter, and you should get about 3.34. So check on that. Make sure you're doing that correctly. Um, and then we will move on to properties of rational exponents. So we're going to go through this kind of quickly just because these properties, these are not new. So these are the same as before. So the same properties of exponents that we know and love. Um, so I'm just going to go through them. You can look at these examples right here. Um, talk about them quickly. But uh, we're just going to jump into examples after I read through this. So the first one, when we have um, multiplication like this, bases are the same. You just add the exponents. So looking at this example, we have 3 to the 1 half times 3 to the 3 halves. Uh, you add those exponents. Um, you'll notice they have the same denominator. So that makes it easy. You just add them together. So 1 half plus 3 halves is 4 halves, which is 2. So we have 3 squared, which is 9. Uh, number 2. Um, we have a to the m, uh, all raised to the nth power. So this is multiplication. This is power of a power. So that's a to the m times n. So this one here, we have 4 to the 3 halves to the second power. So you multiply those. Uh, 3 halves times 2 is 3. Um, so you're going to need to remember how to multiply fractions. So 3 halves times 2 over 1, that's how you do that. You can cancel the 2s, and you're left with 3. So that's how we get the 3 right here. 4, third, four thirds is 64, so that's how you get the answer. Uh, for the third one, you have a times b to the m power. Um, so this is a power of a product. So you can distribute that m to both the a and the b. So in this case, you have uh, 9 times 4 to the 1 half. So you distribute the 1 half power. Um, so you have 9 to the 1 half times 4 to the 1 half, which is the same thing 
as we now know, 9 to the 1 half is the same thing as the square root of 9, which is 3, and the square root of 4, which is 2, and then 3 times 2 is 6. For this one, we mentioned this already, when you have a negative exponent, um, you move that to the bottom and it becomes positive. Or if it already is on the bottom and you have a negative exponent, you move it to the top and it becomes positive, the exponent. So we have 25 to the negative one half power. That's the same thing as one over 25 to the positive one half power. Um, and again, an exponent of one half is the same thing as the square root. So the square root of 25 is five. For this one, we have division. We've got the same base, um, which means we can subtract the exponents. So over here, we have five halves and then one half. So we subtract those. Five halves minus one half is uh, four halves, which is two. So six squared is 36. And then finally, again, we've got parentheses this time. It's a power of a quotient. So you can distribute that M to the A and the B like this. Um, and that's what we did here. So 8 over 27 to the one third power, distribute that one third to the top and bottom. Uh, we now know that one third as an exponent is the same thing as the cube root. And the cube root of 8 is 2. And the cube root of 27 is 3. Okay, so those are the properties of exponents as they relate to rationals. So you'll see that you're going to need to remember how to do operations with fractions. Um, so let's, uh, let's start with this one. So use properties of exponents to simplify. So we have 5 to the 1 half times 5 to the 1 fourth. So those are, uh, they both have a base of 5. So we can add the exponents. So we have 5 to the 1 half plus one fourth power. Those have different um, denominators, so we need to make a common denominator. So I'm gonna take, uh, let's see if I can squeeze this in here. I'm gonna take this one, multiply by two over two, so that I have four in both denominators. So then we have five to the um, two over four plus one over four which is gonna be five to the three fourths. And that's all I can do to simplify that. Um, so letter D, we, oh, we seem to skip B and C. I bet those are on the next slide, so we'll just skip to D. Um, so we have seven to the first power over seven to the one third power. They have the same base of seven, which means we can subtract the exponent, so one minus one third. So I'm gonna rewrite one so that it has a denominator of three. So I'm gonna rewrite it as three over three minus one over three, which is seven to the two thirds power. All right, so here's B and C. Um, so for B, these do not have the same base. So I cannot add these exponents because they have different bases. So that's not legal. So I will not do it. Um, what I will do is distribute this two. Because I can do that. So eight to the one half times two times five to the one third times two. So then we have eight. Uh, one half times two over one is one. So eight to the first power times five to the two thirds power. And I can't simplify that any further by hand, so I will leave it like that. Uh, for letter C, first thing I wanna do here is I don't like that we have a negative. So I'm gonna put it in the denominator, this whole thing. is raised to the one fourth power. So let's distribute that one fourth now. So one over two to the fourth times one fourth times three to the fourth times one fourth equals one over, so four times one over four is just one. So one over two to the first 
times 3 to the first. And we can simplify that further because we know that 2 to the first is 2. 3 to the first is 3. So we've got 1 over 2 times 3, which is 6. Okay, for letter E, um, let's do this a little differently. I'm going to show you something else we can do with this. So we have 12 to the 1 3rd and 4 to the 1 3rd. I'm actually not going to start by distributing that too. What I'm going to do is um, sort of undistribute this 1 3rd. I'm going to go like this. So since these are the same, this is the same thing as 12 over 4 to the 1 3rd times 2. It's like I'm doing the opposite of distributing that 1 3rd because if we started right here with what I have in blue and we distributed the 1 3rd, which you can do from this, you would just end up with what we have here. So I'm kind of going backwards and I notice since these are the same, I'm going to take that 1 3rd exponent out. And I can only do that because they're the same. Um, we technically could have started C with that as well. We could have taken this 4 out to start. But I did it the other way, and I'm going to do this one the opposite way, just to show you you can do it both ways. So this one, we um, distributed the 1 fourth instead of taking the 4s out, but we could have taken the 4s out. This one, I'm going to take the 1 thirds out um, of the parentheses because they're the same. Now, the other way, you could distribute the 2, but I'm not going to do it that way. So here we go. So we have 12 over 4 and then 1 third times 2, which equals... 12 over 4, we can simplify that because we know that that's 3. Um, and then 1 third times 2 is 2 thirds. So now we have 3 to the 2 thirds power, which we cannot simplify further by hand. So we're going to leave it as it is. All right. Um, so now we have some properties of radicals. So these properties are really similar to exponents. Um, there's only two that we're going to look at right now. So first one is if um, the root is the same. Um, actually, I'm going backwards. Sorry. So for this, if you have multiplication underneath a root, you can split it up into two different radicals. So here's an example. If you have, let's say we have um, two times x, sorry, four, four times x, um, you can rewrite that as square root of 4 times square root of x, which we've actually done before. Hopefully you remember this. Um, square root of 4 is 2, and square root of x. So that's what I mean by that, and you can do that with any nth root. Um, you can also go backwards if you have, uh, say, cube root of, I don't know, uh, y, times the cube root of seven. That's the cube root of seven times y. Two different examples. Um, so it goes either way for those. So let's call this example one. Sorry for making this a mess. Example one, let's call this example two. All right, so now we have uh, the same thing works with division. So this one was multiplication, this is division. It's the same thing. So if you have, uh, the, let's say the fourth root of uh, a over b. That would be the fourth root of a over the fourth root of b. You can do it with numbers too. So that's our first example. Um, second example of that, let's say we have um, the fourth root of uh, 24 over the fourth root of x, you can rewrite it as the fourth root of 24 over x. So it works either way. Let's look at some examples. So for this, we have the, the cubed root. Um, I'm actually going to, we don't need to do that. I'm going to erase those directions. So don't write that down. So you use properties of radicals to simplify. So we have the cubed root of 4 times the cube root of 16. So that's the same thing as the same root, so we can write it under one radical, 4 times 16, which is the cube root of 64, um, which is actually 4. And if you didn't know that, it's always good to check. Now, if that didn't go evenly, um, I, I, you don't need to write it as a decimal, but in this case, 64 is does have a cube root, it's 4, so you're going to want to write it. 
but we don't need to go crazy with a bunch of decimals. So if that if this wasn't something even like that, you could just um you could just circle it and that's your answer. So let's look at this. So we have the fourth root of 162 over the fourth root of 2, which is going to be the fourth root of 162 over 2. And 162 divided by 2 is 81. And I bet you that has um, a whole number answer. So let's go to our calculator here, clear that. The fourth root, 4, and then of 81 is 3. So the answer to this one is 3. All right, so simplifying uh, expressions involving variables. So for these, it's easier to split them up. So we have 125 times y to the sixth under the cube root. Let's do the cube root of 125 times the cube root of y to the sixth. So first of all, the cube root of 125 is 5. So that's simplified. Then we have the cube root of y to the sixth. So let's write that as a fraction and see if we can simplify it. So the root goes in the bottom, power goes in the top, you get five times y squared. I wanna point something out if you're wondering. So this power here was not, um, before when we looked at this, our powers were outside. That's actually the same thing as if the power is in here. Um, so if it's a power, it's a power. And oops, that should have been a six. Sorry about that. That should be a six. But the point that I'm trying to make is still true. So the power, whether it's outside in parentheses or inside with the Y, um, it's still the power. It doesn't make a difference. So you can still write it in the numerator of your fraction. And if you think about it, that does make sense. Because um, if cube root of y to the sixth is y squared, think about it. y squared times y squared times y squared is y to the sixth. So it, so it still makes sense. So that's that simplified. Um, for b, let's uh, let's start by distributing that fraction. So we're going to have 9 to the 1 half times u to the 2, well, to the second times 1 half times v to the 10th times 1 half, which equals, now 9 to the 1 half is the square root of 9. Um, u to the 2 times 1 half is u to the first. And then v to the 10 times 1 half, so 10 times 1 half, 10 over 1 times 1 half is 5, so it's v to the 5th, which equals 3u times v to the 5th. And then this one right here, uh, we have the 4th root of x to the 4th over y to the 8th, so that's going to be um, the 4th root x to the fourth over the fourth root of y to the eighth. So the fourth root of x to the fourth, um, if you have four as a power and as a root, those cancel each other out, but let's just show why. So we're going to have x uh, to the four over four, and then y to the eight over four. So 4 over 4 is 1, so we just have x to the first power over y, 8 divided by 4 is 2. And I believe that was our last one here. Yep, so that's it. Um, hopefully that made sense. You will have a worksheet on this.